most of us have heard of Zeno's paradox. Usually it's described like this. If I want to walk from the starting line to the finish, I first have to walk halfway. Then I have to walk half of the remaining distance, and then I have to walk half of the distance remaining after that, and so on. I'll always be able to cut the remaining distance in half, so I'll never reach the finish. Well, a couple of things aren't quite right about this. First of all, Zeno had four paradoxes of motion, not one, so Zeno's paradox is a pretty vague name. Second, this paradox is backwards, and when it's told backwards like this, there's a very nice mathematical solution. What we're doing is just adding up the fractions, one-half plus one-fourth plus one-eighth plus one-sixteenth plus one-thirty-second, and so on. Well, this infinite sum equals one, so we do get to the finish eventually. I suppose it may take infinite time, but that's not the point of this. The original version of this paradox is much more troubling. True, we need to reach the halfway point before we get to the finish, but we need to reach the quarterway point first. Before we reach the quarterway point, we need to reach the one-eighth way point. But before that, we must travel one-sixteenth of the path, and so on, since we can keep cutting the distance in half. We soon begin to see that we can never leave the starting line at all. All motion is impossible. This is Dino's first paradox, called the dichotomy. He assumes that space is continuous, that is, that we can chop it up into infinitely small pieces. Now, let's assume that time is continuous. This paradox is called the Achilles because it stars that famous character of legend. Achilles is played, played by this dinosaur bobblehead. Achilles is very fast, and he's chasing this tortoise, who is very slow. But the tortoise has a head start on Achilles. By the time Achilles reaches the point where the tortoise started, the tortoise has moved forward a bit. Not far, but he has moved. Then, by the time Achilles reaches the spot where the tortoise just was, the tortoise has moved again in that amount of time. Still not very far, but Achilles hasn't been able to catch him yet. So Achilles runs to the spot where the tortoise just was. But the tortoise has inched forward in, again in that time. And again, and again, till we start to see that Achilles will never catch the tortoise because every time he reaches the spot where the tortoise just was, the tortoise has moved forward in that time. And this will go on forever because we can cut time into infinitely small pieces. Ah, but what if we can't cut time and space into infinitely small pieces? What if there is a smallest distance, or a smallest unit of time? Well, Zeno thought of that too. Our next paradox is called the arrow. We're going to look at an arrow in flight. Actually, I'm going to use this pencil because I don't want to shoot arrows in my house. We're going to assume that time is discrete, that it is composed of moments, and there is no shorter length of time than a single moment. So, at any given moment during the pencil's flight, it will not be moving. It will be frozen like a photograph. But over time, the pencil moves towards the target. So, when does that mo movement happen? Maybe the pencil moves within a moment. So, at the beginning of the moment, it's here, and at the end of the moment, it's here. But if there's a beginning and an end to the moment, it must have two parts, and so then we would be able to cut it into smaller units of time. So, when does the pencil move? It does not move during any moment in time, but we see it approaching the target. Is all motion just a series of single frames, like a flipbook or a movie? I'll let you ponder that while we move on to our final paradox. This paradox is called the stadium, and we're going to assume that space is discrete, that there is a smallest distance and we can't cut it down any smaller. We have these three rows of blocks. Imagine that each block is only as wide as the smallest distance. The A blocks are stationary, but the R and T blocks are moving at the exact same speed as each other, but in opposite directions. So, at one point, the three rows of blocks are lined up like this, where the leftmost T and the rightmost R are lined up with each other, and with the middle A. They're still moving, and the shortest distance they can move is one block's distance. So they next line up like this, with all three blocks lined up perfectly. But in the previous position, the leftmost T and the rightmost R were lined up. Now, the leftmost T is lined up with the leftmost R. When was the leftmost T lined up with the middle R like this? The blocks moved the shortest possible distance, but they must have lined up like this to get from the first position to the second. 
But if there's a position in the middle, that would mean that the distance they traveled wasn't the smallest distance after all. There you have it, Zeno's paradoxes of motion. They are much more compelling when examined altogether. Are space and time discrete or continuous? Either way, we have a conundrum.